what are some of the common mistakes investors can make when building their portfolios? I'm Kirsty Lamont. I'm a director here at BetaShares, and today we have Cameron Gleeson, our senior investment strategist, here to talk about building your core portfolio. So Cameron, tell us, what are some of the common mistakes that investors can make when they're building their investment portfolio? So, you know, we're all subject to internal biases, which mean we try to do things which are likely to be counter to building long-term wealth. And that includes trying to time markets. It includes building portfolios of a collection of our favorite funds without thinking about the overall implications. And it also includes trying to generate outperformance out of the entire portfolio. We find that a great way to counter that is to allocate part of your overall portfolio as what we call the portfolio core which is designed to provide broad market exposure and not necessarily chase performance or time markets. What exactly is the core of your investment portfolio? Yeah, so the core of your portfolio is that part of your overall investment that you want to ensure is going to be robust and can be held for the long run. So that even when markets are volatile, you can, you can sleep at night. Um, you know, we know that investing is a, it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, you need to make sure that that part of your portfolio is something that allows you to stick to your investing plan because building wealth over time is about con constantly allocating money into the market and allowing that to compound. Um, so having that, that core, which really matches your, your risk tolerance, can allow you to do so. When it comes to building your portfolio core, what are some of the key things we should be looking for? So the first thing that you want to ensure you're doing is where you have your asset allocation, you need to ensure that the building blocks and the investments you're making are going to give diversified exposure to each of those asset classes. So you're fulfilling that asset allocation. The second point is you want to ensure that those investments can ideally be held for the very long term. And that's going to reduce turnover, so transaction costs and tax effects. You also want to, of course, ensure that they are going to deliver you know, strong long-term net of fee performance. And finally, looking for building blocks or, or investments that allow some degree of, you know, complement to reduce the overall portfolio volatility. Cam, what are your tips for building a strong investment core? So the data shows that it's incredibly difficult to outperform the stock market through active management or stock picking. And so it makes sense to include some broad market exposure at the lowest possible cost. At BetaShares, we advocate for including some low cost broad market exposure, but also pairing that with some complementary exposures. As Australian investors, if we think about our Australian equity allocation, that's likely to have large weights to banks and miners. So what global equity exposures, low cost global equity exposures can I bring into my portfolio that are going to complement that? Or similarly, if I've got that equity allocation, what type of fixed income can I use to add diversification to my overall portfolio? And can you tell us a little bit about the BetaShares core ETF range? Yeah, so thinking about some of those you know, extremely low cost uh, broad market exposures, A200 is our BetaShares Australia 200 ETF, which is the lowest cost Australian equity ETF. Management fee on that is 0.04% per annum. Perfect solution for your Australian equities. BGBL is our BetaShares Global Shares ETF. So that's broad exposure across equity markets, excluding Australia. That's over 1,500 global companies with a management fee of only 0.08%. Another alternative, if you didn't necessarily want to have an Australian equity ETF and a global equity ETF, is an all-in-one solution. Our BetaShares Diversified All Growth ETF has an exposure to 8,000 individual companies across Australian and global equities with a management fee of only 0.19% per annum. So they're great low cost exposures. But then we, we think about the balance of that portfolio and we talk about Australian equities being weighted to banks and miners. So what's a great global exposure that's going to give balance to that Australian equities? Well, look at the beta shares NASDAQ 100 ETF, ticker code NDQ. Some global leading tech companies in there. We know that our technology segment in Australia is only about 4% of our overall market capitalization. It's a great way to add some complementary exposures that are only a very small part of our Australian market. And then we can think about the defensive allocations. You know, cash can be a really important asset to blend in with your portfolio. AAA is BetaShares high interest cash ETF, which offers very attractive rates of return 
with assets that are held in cash bank accounts. And then finally, OZBD, our Australian Composite Bonds ETF, which is going to give you that sort of singular fixed income exposure, that equity diversification tool to round out your portfolio. Thanks, Cam, for sharing all those great tips with us today. And if you want to learn more about the BetaShares core ETF range, head to betashares.com.au slash core.